Okay, welcome to the gallery at Lakeland Community College. My name is Mary Urbis. I'm the curator and gallery director of the exhibition called From Woman. This is the 12th incarnation of the exhibition. It's to celebrate Women's History Month. And um, I've included this year 38 artists from Northeast Central Ohio, Bloomington, Indiana, Toledo, and um, they're showing 123 artworks created in a diverse um, variety of media. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to walk through the gallery. I'm going to talk a little bit about the pieces, give you a little bit of insight. The hope is that you'll uh, come to the gallery itself, see the show. The artist reception is Sunday, March 24th. Um, our event starts at 3.30 till 5 p.m. It's in Building D. It's free, open to the public. It's held in conjunction with the Lakeland Community College Women's Center. They're doing their Women of Achievement Awards. Their award ceremony starts at 2 o'clock in the Performing Arts Center, which is right next to the gallery. Again, so hopefully we'll get the video out and you'll hear about this and you'll come see the show and um, kind, of, um, kind of embrace all the, the talent of the women that we're showing today. Well, first of all, what I want to point out is I want to thank the board of directors at Lakeland Community College, the president of the college, Dr. Morris Beveridge, because in December they found the money to renovate the gallery. So we have brand new painted wall surfaces. We have new light diffusing shades. We have extra security cameras. So I am so grateful that this is really the true, first true official show that I'm curating in the brand new space. So what we're doing now is we're going to start with Sandy Schellenberger. And um, this is a textile wall quilt where Sandy um, sometimes hand paints, silk screen prints, uh, shibori, tie dyes the fabric. So some of the fabrics are commercial, some of them are hand done, and then what she does is assembles them and uh, machine quilts them. And you'll see a couple other pieces of hers in the show. Okay, the next artist is an artist named Christine Reese. She's new to the collection this year. I try to include at least 10 to 15 new artists every year. And um, Christine just moved into a new studio in the Artcraft building. And her, her focus, as you can see, is she's a colorist. She believes she works with the emotionally charged color. I love how she lays down the color. With, and it's not about the little minuscule, little one hair brush details. And this, this piece is called On Holden Pond, obviously done at the Holden Arboretum with the, the lily pads. And you know the lily pads are one of my favorite um, areas at uh, Holden Arboretum. And these are oil on canvas. And then this next piece is the marsh. And again, how she handles her color, and you can see it, that, that, sh that really does look like a, uh, a fall season. You know, when you, all of a sudden you see the leaves turning yellow, and you, when, you, when, when you see the sun coming through, or the, um, the wind coming through, and it kind of flaps. And I love how you can kind of see the, the red underpainting underneath on the bottom part of the, of the composition here. And again, when I pick out pieces for the show, um, I try and pick up different sizes. I like the fact that Christine's work is a little bit oversized. Uh, I design the show so that there's a visual storyline that's created where every piece impacts the piece next to it. Uh, so this next piece is uh, by Judith Brandon. Judith Brandon is a graduate of the Institute of Art, as am I. This is a mixed media on paper piece. She, Judith always does these kind of atmospheric, surreal landscapes, you know, with, with clouds and water and the elements. And, you know, again, like I always say, I always recommend that you try and come and see the show in person because the video is not going to pick up the nuances of some of the, the mark making and some of the surfaces. And the paintings do emote, you know, especially paintings that are not under glass. So again, I, I recommend you come to visit. The gallery is open Monday through Friday, 9 to 9, Saturdays, 9 to 5, but um, March 24th is the reception. Here's another piece of Christine's. Actually, she finished this piece for the show. This is called Tree of Life. It's another oil on um, canvas. And then we have three pieces by Melissa Harris. One's acrylic on paper, the other is acrylic on canvas, and then a watercolor. 
And what she's been doing is she's been dealing with, with in her compositions, the disappearing context of, the, of our country's landscape, the exposure to natural disasters. You'll see she's sitting on a pipe that's got sewage coming out of it, and then the pipe at the end with the, with the gosh, gosh knows what's coming out of that, that pipe. So she's, in, you know, she's environmentally sensitive, and she's trying to depict that into her work. Okay, this wall piece and um, sculptural piece of found ob object assemblage is done by Gwen Waite. Gwen is a artist from Akron. You've seen her in my women's show. You've seen her in my Skull and Skeleton show. I really enjoy the, the whole assemblage art movement of using the found objects and some of the pieces, parts that she comes up with are pretty cool and you, you get the sense of the history of these items and who used them before and how she's elevating um, uh, everyday items into high art. Okay, the next piece is a gouache piece by an artist named Pat Ingram. And these gouache is a water-based medium and it's about laying down the color in flat plane, so it's all about craftsmanship and being precise. And, and this is, um, a piece she did with you know the reflections on the building and, and these are the whole series that you'll see of hers are, are kind of like urban landscapes. This one is called City Reflections. These next two pieces are uh, graphite on paper by Marilyn Zelay. If you've been paying attention you see that I've put her in the shows for at least the last I don't know eight to ten years. She passed away a few years ago and she was so prolific and I've been working with her sister, Diane Tira, as far as selecting work every year to um, showcase, because she was an incredible draftswoman, woman she knows how to draw, and she had a, an affinity to doing the, um, the hands and the faces, and then with this piece, it's kind of all about the reflections, and that's why I put it next to the piece of gouache, with, which was the reflections of the building. So again, when you come through the show, you'll see these visual threads, sometimes, they're very subliminal and sometimes they're pretty obtuse and in your, in your face. But it, again, it, just, it takes me probably four or five hours just to design the installation of the show. And then the next um, triptych is a triptych by Laura Dom, And it's acrylic on canvas paper and it's called Affair of the Heart. And she said that she was doing um, she called her work patternism because she likes to do all these tight patterns. And, and me being a textile designer, there's a part of me that wonders if God, if she designed textiles to um, repeat patterns in fabric, how cool those would be. Because these, these images would, would translate so easily into a um, graphic form like a screen print to make fabric. Now this next piece is done by Kimberly Chapman. She's a recent graduate of the Institute of Art. This is called Elsie's Arsenal, Gilbert Was Drunk. It has to do about her, her, um, her British grandmother, Mary, Mary and Gilbert. And they actually rented a house in Willoughby, Ohio in the 1920s. And he got drunk a lot and he was abusive to her and that's why you see half the photo was out of focus as if he's drunk and some of these are some of the tools. And you know the story goes that um, she threw you know, scissors at Gilbert's ankle and, um, you know, trying to fight back against him because she wanted to, um, her grandmother wanted to protect her children from his abusive um, behavior. And then that, the, um, the screwdriver was hers and she and has her name on the flip side. And then the uh, sculptures are hand formed and glazed out of porcelain. pieces of padding room. Again, these are gouache. This first one is called The City. The second one is called Urban Direction. And this third piece is called Elemental. Okay, we have a quartet of images from, again, from Laura Dumb. 
And these are some, um, you know, pop culture icons. We've got Frank Zappa and um, Jimi Hendrix, Tom Waits, and Janis Joplin. These are acrylic on canvas. And you know Laura from her collaborations with her husband Gary. Uh, they work together, but these are these are some pieces that she <clears throat> excuse me that she did by herself. Okay, these next two pieces, although they're small, they're little gems. They're glass mosaic pieces by Lisa Rushman. Uh, Lisa actually has a studio over in the Matrix building, which is off of Route 615 in Mentor. Uh, they do their second uh, Friday events. You can always check out what's going on in the studios. You can see artists working in their studios. And glass mosaic is a little bit different than leaded glass. It's put on a substrate and grouted in between. And this series, are, these are kind of like um, spiritual um, entities. The one on top is called Maka, and the one on the bottom is called Isis. Then we have the next two paintings by Judy Takis. Judy Takis is also a fellow alumni of the Cleveland Institute of Art. And these are part of her Chicks with Balls series that she's been working on for quite a few years where she's trying to immortalize and, and show the power of, of women who are overcoming adversity. This one right here is actually called um, Hatchling and so she posed herself with some of the little chicklets. And the cool thing about this is it's created and painted so it could be hung any direction. And, and knowing that she went through the design process over the Institute of Art, that is, that is the, an example or a, a great prowess, the fact that you could change it to you know, a vertical portrait or, or a horizontal landscape and the composition still works no matter what um, angle you're looking at. And then the one next to it is one of her more recent pieces and it's about the last marble. So here, her chick is holding the marble in her hand. Again, these are oil on canvas. And then you've kind of got a, kind of a fun trippy piece by Sharon Pomalis Towsey. This is oil and mixed media on um, canvas on wood with glitter and mirrors. It's called Food for Thought. And Sharon is known for her very detailed, very powerful, emotionally charged portraits of women. And these are kind of fun because they're using different um, pop culture visuals. And then you've got the glitter. And then she covers the top with a coat of a resin so that it's sealed and gives that kind of adds to the whole plastic artificial quality that she's trying to achieve. And then these next three pieces are done by Jamie Sense. Jamie Sense is another graduate of the Institute of Art. These are acrylic and pencil on birch wood. And um, the first one is uh, florid profusion. The middle one is serif and camouflage. And the third is interlude. And what's interesting about Jamie's work is she'll, she'll take a piece of birch wood and she'll, she'll look at it and, look, and it will tell her where to put the, the composition, where the figure will go. And then what she does is she starts then picking up the nuances in the background. And so you've got these traditional, almost Raphaelite, incredibly rendered women with the soft folds. And, and obviously you can see that Jamie has a handle on um, anatomy and bones and hands and figures, but then she starts going on the background and starts pulling out and, and adding details and, and you know, it's, it's the whole arrangements of the blacks and grays and lines and dots, and you've got this surrealism kind of thing going on in the background, which kind of adds another layer to her work. And again, you've got traditional figures, but then she's treating them in a little bit more contemporary, surreal way. And then we're going to finish off this room by showing you the, the table that Sharon Pomali's created with the, the glitter. And again, it's just a different way to um, present the work. Uh, it's, a, it's a painting that she just put on those, those legs. And I know that there's a name for them. I think they're called rocket legs or bullet legs. It's kind of like a very vintage feel to it. 
And just before they came to the show, it actually was in her living room used as a coffee table. Okay, we're going to go to the sculpture created by Lisa Kenyon. Now the base of the sculpture is a piece of concrete that she found that had stuff coming out of it. She cast pieces of um, leaves, she cast bees and dragonflies, she um, created that piece underneath it and it's called If They Go, We Go and it's all about um, the fact that if we lose our our bees, if we lose our insects, then we lose our pollinators, then we lose our, our farms, we lose our food, and part of it has to do with what's happening with the environment, with the chemical companies, and the, how the habitats are being lost because of the herbicides. So this is a very powerful piece, and, some, and the, the butterflies around the edge there are actually are the ghost butterflies, because those are the butterflies that are disappearing. And we all know that if we don't have things to pollinate our our fruits and vegetables, then we have no food and we're we're kind of stuck. This is gonna this is gonna be a problem. But again, like Ed, with I keep saying with this in this tour, it's always better to come to the show, see the work in person, because oh the other thing that she did is she took some plant materials and also cast them in bronze and then painted them with um, epoxy paint to bring in a little bit of the coloring. And then, you know, as I design the show and I create the visual storyline, as you pull, as Dan pulls back and you see Trisha Common's paintings with the yellow and the little bits of, of natural items, it all kind of works together visually. Okay, these next three oil portraits on canvas are done by Susan Krause. The one on the left is her daughter. The one in the middle is her is a friend of hers who owns horses, and then the third is her granddaughter. And I think you could kind of tell the uh, the emotional, um, personal involvement that she as the as the artist has with the subject and how she's able to ca capture the nuances in her granddaughter. You could to me, you could just see in the in this portrait that the portrait was painted of her by someone who loves her. And, and in this case, it was her grandmother. And then we have three more um, oil portraits on canvas by Trisha Common. These are part of her kimono series. And what was kind of fun is that is if you pull back a little bit, you can see the, the um, the portrait with the yellow and a little fawn and it kind of echoes Lisa Kenyon's piece with the with the with the foliage that's coming and the dry materials that's coming out of the base. Again, as an installation designer, I look for those little um, visual clues. Sometimes they just show up. Sometimes as the work shows up, I realize oh, I picked out a lot of things in this theme. And you'll see in another room there's a, there's a whole theme of birds. There's and usually in this show there's there's birds, there's Mother Nature, there's landscapes. Um, it's kind of like a recurring thing that I think, and, and that's something that, that, that I'm attracted to, and obviously that's the kind of work that I choose when I select the art for this exhibition. And here we have um, a piece on paper, acrylic on paper by Beth Nash. There's two, two of her figure pieces. You'll see Beth's work this July at the Boston Mills Arts Festival, the July weekend. In the middle is a painting by Kathy Meads Garrett. Kathy has a um, studio at, in the Article Gallery space over on Waterloo, and they have their first Friday events, Walk Over Waterloo, every first Friday. And so she's she's kind of known for her um, you know, more monochromatic uh, compositions and color palette. But I thought this was kind of fun because of the the brightness, the color, and the fact that it's called ovum, and obviously this is a show about women, so it's kind of like a recurring theme. And it was placed between um, Beth's pieces, because you'll see in both the pieces there's like these circular organic elements that are incorporated into the actual um, composition itself. And Beth has, has been experimenting with black and white, and these are some of her her um, colored portraits that she sent. And you'll see in another room she has some pieces that were uh, acrylic on wood panel. 
Okay, here we have a textile wall piece by Susan Shai, who's an artist from Worcester. Susan is a political a activist and she always integrates um, pop culture, news of the days, things that are happening around the world into her pieces. And this piece was done as an inspiration from last, this past year on July 4th when that woman climbed the Statue of Liberty and to bring attention about abolishing ICE and what was going on with that. She knew that, that she would get uh, TV coverage, she knew that she would get um, news to come out and talk to her about that. So, um, and you can go on Susan's website to, to hear more about the piece. Uh, there's a booklet in the gallery that has all the artist statements that explains the, what's going on on this piece. She is a journal writer, so um, her artist statement for this piece is pages and pages long. And this piece is called Queen of the Pirates Cups, Pyrex Cups in the Kitchen Tarot Series. And it's called, Day, well, the other title is Daily News. Okay, next we have a mixed media piece by Indiana artist Patricia Swearingen Hecker. What she actually did is she take, took all these rubber stamps and stamped them onto pieces of tissue paper that she then applied to this bathing suit um, form and kind of collaged them. And these are all inspirational pieces. She and her husband, John, have a company called Tattoo Dreams where they make boxes and that are and and charms and, and they also do funerary urns too, but it's all about positive and you know affirmations. We are all just walking each other home. Dream, create, um, dream in colors that don't exist. Art is long, life is short, make every day count. And then what she did is she had that she made the wings out of recycled Yardsticks, sorry, lost that word there for a second. And then hanging off the bottom are some of the, the creative, you know, the creative materials, the supplies that an artist would use, a palette knife, a knife, a yardstick, a paintbrush. And then we come next to Peacemaker, which is done by Laura Lai Scazenta. And this is mixed media assemblage. And again, this is this is kind of the political room, as you'll see in a, a minute. We started with the um, piece by Susan Shai, and here we have the little peacemaker here. And if you kind of, you know, again, this is another one of those pieces. She's got all kinds of rhinestones on her on her head, and it's real shiny and, and reflective. And the different pieces of nostalgia that Lorelai integrates into the pieces themselves with the trims. And then now these are four pieces by Deborah Shapiro. These are magazine paper collages from her leg series. And so um, they're made out of, the, out of the, the magazine collage. And each one has a story. And again, if you go to the booklet that I compiled, it'll tell you about you know, the different um, compositions and what they mean. And, and you know, the, again, this is all very symbolic. Every, everything's there for a reason. And then next, we have a piece by Lisa Rushman. She's a glass mosaic artist. This is a piece called, I Have the Best Words, Believe Me. These are quotes by one of our elected officials. And um, Lisa was very adamant and very persistent as far as making sure that these were all indeed quotes, that this was not fake news. I had a woman in here a couple weeks ago who was very outraged and very upset that we would have a piece like this in the exhibition and I looked at her and I just said, but this is everything that he has said, so what, why would you have a problem with that? So um, again, you know, artwork does have a place here, Our art is a way for artists to kind of transform what they're thinking into some visuals, you know, there's there's a lot going on in this world these days and the, the artists have opinions on that and it's just interesting how it personifies itself. And next we have a textile piece by Connie artist uh, Sandy Schellenberger. She creates a lot of the fabrics using batik, screen printing, hand painting, uh, shibori, so she's all about creating the fabrics and then putting them together in non-traditional formats, non-traditional um, compositions. And then the piece next to it is another Deborah Shapiro piece. 
and it's all about the first lady quotes. And actually, I actually saw this work at the Cleveland airport a few months ago, and then I ran into her in an art fair and said, oh my gosh, I saw your work at the airport. First of all, she was surprised that anybody even watched the airport and saw it, but that I would recognize the work. And, it's, and there's um, quotes from all the different first ladies. Some of them are very inspirational. You've got something from Abigail A. Adams, Nancy Reagan, Michelle Obama, Rosalind Carter. Um, Jackie Kennedy, there's a little bit of every, a little bit of, from every single one. And I love how she put it together, you know, with the, with this, with the stripes and the, and the stars on the blue field. This next three-dimensional found object assemblage piece is by an artist named Gwen Waite. Gwen is um, from Akron, and this piece is called Don't Abandon Hope. And ironically, you know, again, with this creating the visual storyline of the show, you've got the, what are those called, sprockets that are painted kind of red, silver, and blue. She's, you've got the figure of a, you know, from a, um, an award, a trophy of someone getting ready to dive or jump into something. And then you've got the flag on the top, you know, and God bless America. So again, some of the pieces are very political. Some of them are just artists commenting, comment commenting on what's going on in the world around them right now. Okay, now this next piece, this is a, a large-scale charcoal on paper piece by Leslie Adams. Leslie is a Toledo artist, and this is called Portrait of the Artist as a Young Girl. And for those of us who are old enough to appreciate the, how back in the olden days, before there were internet classes, there were correspondence schools where you would draw the box or draw the deer or draw something, you'd send it to them and then they'd draw it, send it back to you with a little bit of like a, a critique on it. So, so these correspondence schools um, classes kind of predate the internet. But Leslie's, you know, she does commissions all over the country. She's a very well-known, she's a member of some of the big you know, international portrait societies. And just how the fact that this started as a white piece of paper and how she had, added her lights and darks, the chiaroscura, the, the shapes and the edges, and, and that she was able to create such a beautiful, stunning, and very powerful um, piece. Okay, this is a painting of oil on wood panel by Stanka Kordik. Stanka is another uh, fellow alumni from the Cleveland Institute of Art. This is a piece called A New Sun. Um, she teaches over at Beaumont School for Girls, so she is actually impacting a new generation of women artists, of, of women painters. And she's known for her almost very ethereal, ephemeral treatment of the figure, and she puts them sometimes in a very dreamy, almost like, is it really there kind of background. She does like to use the, um, a squeegee to apply her paint. So she's, so she's all about the mark making and the quality of the mark making. Now next to that are two paintings, mixed media on panel by Sarah Curry. Sarah is, uh, lives in Cleveland Heights, but she teaches at Brush High School. And the painting on the bottom is called Tied Together, and the one on the top is called Her Golden Spoon. And one of the reasons that I chose the work, A, because I really enjoy the portraiture and the, the illustrative quality that um, Sarah seems to incorporate into her composition, but you know that there's a story going on there. And the fact that she's just picking young women, you know, the future of our country, the future of our world, our, our young men and women, but specifically, she is, you know, I chose pieces of her um, incorporating young women into her compositions. And then the piece next to it is done by Sandy Schellenberger, and she creates all the fabrics. This, these look like they're probably either fatigue printed or resist printed, and then she hand paints her fabrics and then pieces them together. Yes, it's a traditional textile format, but not how she treats the surfaces and not how she creates the fabrics themselves. Okay, the no next four pieces we are going to be looking at is created by a collaboration of artists. 
The artist names, they, they are collectively known as Mandem, and they have a studio in the, um, the Artful Building over on Coventry Road in Cleveland Heights. And these are mixed media on canvas. And the artist names is Maze, Moko, and Kitsu. And these are from their series called The Medical Trials of the Saints. This is called St. Vitus, the World, World Seer. And you can, for me, after meeting the artist, meeting the model, meeting Kitsu, you can see that the artist that, who created these paintings and painted them had a love for their subject. There's something that just emotes from these pieces that are, they're quite, part of it's the, it's the powerful image, it's the scale, and it's how that they've been so beautifully rendered. And then the two pieces in, the, in between these are digital photographs, and they actually start with digital photographs and then create the paintings that kind of are inspired by the photographs. And this, these are, it's, a, it's like their version of a, what we used to be like a traditional Victorian technique of photo collage, where they got, obviously this was done the turn of the century, and not this century, but the last one, so we're talking about late 1800s, early 1900s. And so I just, and I chose the piece on the right called The Little Prince because of the, it's all about the nurturing and the fauna and the, um, the flowers and the limited color palette. And with, with and they explain some of their work in, the, in an artist statement. And again, I invite people to come to the show, see the work themselves, check out the binder that's full of the artist statements. So it gives you an insight into what they're doing. You can always contact me. I'd be happy to answer questions for you. And then the piece next to it is a um, the the moth eater, and um, and this, with the the butterfly and with the and, it, and it's the whole limited palette of the of the hair and then the color of the moth. But the whole theme of the moth and butterfly seems to be a little bit recurring in the show. Uh, we've got a painting by them. With the, with the moth in the mouth. We've got a sculpture by Lisa Kenyon with butterflies. We have a sculpture by Linda Dempsey that has um, you know, some butterfly images incorporated into the um, composition. Okay, we have two more paintings by Sarah Curry. These are mixed media, media on panel. And again, it's about showing you different ways of presenting the pieces and the fact that I like that she's depicting children and young teens in her compositions. And the last piece on this wall is another mixed media piece by Kathy Skerritt. And it's a very limited color palette. And the title is when, when Sorrow Settles into the Deeper Land When Earth Has Gone to Twilight. Kathy does like to integrate some very spiritual messages into her titles, and, and once you have the title going on in your head, you kind of you kind of get a sense of the brain trust of what's going on when she's creating these pieces of art. Okay, this is a piece by Bernadette Glorioso called Elegant. Equipo equipoise. This is she uses uh, commercial fabrics that they, she then paints on top of. So she obliterates the background. She pulls the figures in and out. And you see some of the flat pattern coming through on the faces. She also uses recycled frames. So, uh, so again, it's one of those things you always wonder about: recycled, repurposed frames. If those frames could talk, what, what would they tell you about the piece that had been there before? But I like the fact this is a very contemporary approach, and again, the fact that she's using recycled, repurposed materials. Now this next piece by Annie Peters is a very timely piece. It's called The Woman's Medicine Chest. And it's, it's very timely because of what's happening with the pro-life, pro-abortion, uh, anti-abortion movement that's going on, the fact that there's worries that they might bring, have to go back to Roe versus Wade, which is a decision that was made decades ago and why they want to waste their time and resources going back at it when clearly our country, you know, voted in a certain way, but I digress. But so this kind of, um, what the artist has included in this chest are some of the chemicals and some of the things that a woman would have to do to receive an abortion. 
because you know it was such a taboo, and if she was you know pregnant and wanted couldn't keep the baby or whatever, and the doctor wouldn't help her, this is what they resorted to doing. And what you can I don't, I'm hoping it'll come in with when he videotapes us a little farther down, is the um, coat hanger that was fashioned into a hook. And, and what young girls don't realize, how many women lost their lives in back alley abortions and by these quacks that literally, literally was, it was black plastic bags, rubber gloves, and coat hangers. And that's that's a time we don't need to go back to. We need to protect women's health. And if they and it's all for me, it's all about the right to choose. And I'm sorry, no man, no one has a right to tell me what I can or cannot do with my body. And then to finish off this room is another piece by Lisa Rushman called Ms. Willendorf. And those of you who remember your art history, the Venus of Willendorf is one of the first sculptures that was discovered, I don't know, they figured out, what is it, 30,000 years old? It, 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 was, it, it wasn't a lot of uh, detail, it was a very voluptuous figure of a, of a female nurturing figure, and so Lisa decided to immortalize it in this piece, and of course there she is, um, you know, playing her little pan flute. Okay, this is another piece by Lorelei Schizenta. This is a found object assemblage piece. One of you to pay attention to the, those crazy rhinestone hair as Dan was kind of panning the camera over it. He was getting some cool reflections and light refractions. And again, it's free bird. If you look at all the different imagery, you know, you've got butter. There seems to be a lot of artists this year doing the butterfly images. And you've got the Uncle Sam wants you in the middle. You've got a buffalo roaming next to a psychedelic mushroom, and you've got a rainbow. And then you have American Indian over there in a headdress. And then you've got the yin and yang on the feet. Okay, this next piece is done by Betty Skafka. She's another artist I like to feature every year. She just turned 90, so as long as she's producing art, I am going to show her work. I want to support her. I love what she's doing. She does, she calls her form of art dotalism, where she sits there and does th hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of layers of the dots. And this is called Love at First Sight. And then what she'll do is she uses reclaimed, repurposed frames that she then paints on the frames to kind of add to the interest and kind of brings the whole um, matting and the whole framing actually into the into the viewer into the composition of the painting itself and we've got four more pieces by lisa rushman these are um talking about bird talk series and this is a, and she can explain a little bit better than i can but it's all about um, when birders learn to, um, are trying to remember how, how a bird sings or what they sing, they come up with these words and when, they, when you say the words, it kind of has the cadence of their, um, of their song. Here's another piece by Betty Skafka. This again, where she really goes out and tricks out the frame. This is called Spirit of the Snake, and this is oil on canvas board. Okay. We've got three pieces by Becky Grasser. Becky actually teaches here at Lakeland Community College. And what is a bichromate print, you ask? <laughs> okay. It's a, we, they start with a photographic neg negative from a camera photosensitive chemicals called dichromate, gum arabic, or egg whites, or gelatin, or casein. You use watercolor pigments as paints and watercolor paper. You use a UV light source, handmade commercially from the sun, a frame to keep the negative tight, and lots of water. The entire process is done in a dim room. So this is kind of a lost art. This is, there's not a lot of people doing doing it this year, doing it these days. And if you look, it's, there's a different color palette, a different sense to it. It almost looks like it's a different sen sense of time. It's like a, a, a time capsule that she's able to create. And she is able to do quite a bit of extensive um, traveling. So I do believe that these were done probably on one of her many, many trips um, overseas. Okay. 
Here's the work of Carrie Gortz. This is acrylic oil ink on enamel paper. This is called Night Witness. If you come to the gallery and you see this show, you'll see that the, there's a recurrence of the moon, there's a recurrence of the birds. I love Carrie's work just because of the patterning and the details that she puts into the pieces. She has a space over at West 78th Street, as does Laurel Herbold, which is the piece next to it. These are like uh, painted end grains of wood, and I just, I love this piece. This is, she's just, she, this is actually on loan from someone who purchased this piece. I've been romancing this piece for months over in her studio, and she sold it to the, right before the show, but the, the person who bought it was kind enough to let us borrow it for the exhibition. Again, it's a, different, it's a different kind of media, different kind of presentation, because for me, it's about, you know, different presentations so people have an idea of how different artists can create their work and, and doesn't always have to be matted, framed under glass. Here's another piece by Carrie Gortz called Lunar Pole. Those of you who know me have been paying attention all these years, you know that I'm a big fan of the moon, I'm a big fan of the Honu, and look at there's nothing but Honu. The, uh, laying some eggs and getting and then you're watching them as they hatch in the moonlight as they go to the ocean to to live the rest of their life and, and, and be taken away by the water. This next piece is Lisa Ken Kenyon. It's called Border. This is a, a cast bronze piece. It's kind of real organic. You saw her piece in the other room with the figure with the, with the butterflies, you saw it with uh, the flowers, so she's all about the natural elements and how she's able to capture it in a very hard-edged media as um, in bronze. Okay, these next two pieces are done by Annie Peters, and I wrote a little bit of her artist statement when we looked at her medicine cabinet. This first piece is called Empty Nest, the Fledgling Has Flown. It's a photograph and found objects on slate. And then this other piece is called Vinegina, where she did the bat. Where she said she did the basket weaving and the twigs. And look at that luscious um, shadow that we got from the with the light bouncing off of it. And you've got the no posted, no hunting, no trespassing on this property. And, I, and this is the one of the few times where I put the stanchion up just to keep it protected and it kind of, in a way, subliminally echoes the fact of no, no hunting, no trespassing, don't get close. And then just, just by the serendipitous of it, of it all, this painting at the end that, of, of Bernadette Glorioso called Songbirds in Spring has, you know, it's painted on the fabric where you can see that, the, that she lets it come forward then she paints over it. But how perfect is, and I couldn't have planned this better, that the color of the stanchions echoes the color of the, ver the horizontal stripes of the fabric. This is one of those, those juicy moments that where I couldn't have planned it any better if I tried. Okay, this is a wool and cotton weaving done by Deborah Silver. It's all about, um, the story behind it is, is how unhappy she was when her dad decided to move them and um, some of the narrative about that. She used 150 um, alphabet blocks to spell out, tell me you love me, I love you, because that's something she said to her dad every day. And how he, re he reaffirmed that he loved her, and she said, well, tell me again. And then we have a, another piece of Evie Zimmers. This is oil on canvas. Evie was an artist who lived here, moved down to Florida. She moved back, and we're really glad that she's back here. We're, back, and we're glad that she's back in the, the Cleveland art community. And the next four paintings, five paintings, are done by Eva Wolf. These are oil on canvas. And she does a lot of uh, oceanscapes, seascapes, but so I was very taken by her moonscapes, as I seem to be a moon child. So we've got moon rising, stardust, watching over me, nighttime prayer, and Luna Del Mar, and how she's able to get the light coming through the waves, the crest of those waves is just exquisite. You just kind of want to jump right in there and go, go surfing or, or go swimming and just be enveloped by the water and how water is so cleansing and purifying. Here's another piece by Betty Skafka. I think my GPS screwed up. It's oil on plexiglass. The one thing about Betty, she's always got these fun 
titles to her pieces, she's got a really dry, wry, dark sense of humor. Okay, the top piece that we're going to look at is a piece by Lisa Kenyon. It's a bronze called Night. And that's on top of a porcelain sculpture by Sharon Grossman. So the, the twigs are porcelain, then she hand painted the birds and then attached the birds to the twigs. We have four more drawings on paper by Jen Marie Zalesnik. Jen is also a Cleveland Institute of Art graduate. She also teaches drawing here at Lakeland Community College. And she just has this whisper touch to her drawing and she does these star maps that kind of kind of all goes together. And again, a lot of these artists explain their aesthetic, they ex explain their inspiration in their artist statement. And when you come to the gallery, there is a booklet, a binder on the counter that has all the um, artist statements in it. Uh, if you have questions, you can always contact me. I can get you in contact with the artist. And a lot of these artists are on Facebook. A lot of these artists have websites. So use the Information Society, Google them, and if you can't get the information you want, then call me. Here's another um, piece of Lisa Kenyon's called Dusk. Again, these are cast bronze. She works out of a foundry on the, in Midtown in the near west side. And here we go, another piece by Sharon Grossman, which is porcelain. Another Betty Skafka piece. This is called Rhino Spirit. Because again, she has an affinity to the animals, and we all know we're all worried about the rhinos that they're going to be that they're rapidly approaching being put on the endangered species list if they're not already. And I just like the contrast of the gray with the red and the green. It's just a dramatic piece. Then here we have three pieces by Laurel Horbold. Laurel has a studio in the West 78th Street complex. These are acrylic and textured paint. And the catch of the day, Mama and hot, Hotbed. Again, you can see her work on Third Fridays in the, at the West 78th Street. And again, I like I picked these because I love the contrast, the, the complementary colors of the of the turquoise blue and the orange, and you've got these growing, nesting seed. Um, percolating kind of images, nurturing images. We have three smaller pieces by Beth Nash. These are acrylic on paper, on wood. Golden Black Kitty, Stinker, and Pink Bunny. And I just love how, she's, how she gives human attributes to, the, to these little purr heads that the the cat has human eyes and hands, and the bunny has, and look at the, you know, the, the expressions. They almost have human emotions, human expressions incorporated into the composition. Okay, we continue with the tour with this oil on canvas piece, by, abstract by Evie Zimmer. Evie is an artist who, thankfully for us, she just returned from um, going down to Florida for a year, so we're glad she's back at her um, studio over uh, near the lake and she's creating her paintings again. She's had a great run recently, she's won some awards, she's won, she's had her pieces um, reprodu reproduced in some glossy magazines, so congratulations, Abby. This next piece you're going to see is by Kathy Mead Scarrett. This is another one of her pieces from her mixed media series where she builds up these incredible surfaces on her canvases and then glazes over them with, with glazes of different colors. And sometimes they're limited palettes, sometimes there's a, there's a little bit more involved like this one, with, which has a little bit of purples and reds and pinks. Um, she has a studio and article gallery which is in the Waterloo Arts District. And they are open every first Friday of the month for their walkover Waterloo event, which they invite people to come to. It's usually from like 7 till 10. It's free, open to the public, plenty of free parking. And it's a way for you to actually see the artists working in their studios. So thanks again for joining me on the, the journey. I hope you enjoyed the show. Again, this was the From Woman 12 show that I cur curated. My name is Mary Irvis. The show is all about creating 
It's work that was created by women, of women, and about women. I hope you can join us on Sunday, March 24th from 3.30 to 5 p.m. here in the gallery. And the gallery is located at Lakeland Community College on Route 306, just south of the Route 306 and, and I-90 um, exit on the freeway. And um, if you have any questions, you can always you can always reach me at mervis at lakelandcc.edu or you can go to our website and check it out there. there there's all the conference contact information is also there and we do have a visitor in the gallery we have Stephen Calhoun he seems to always show up when we're filming these these events so it's kind of kismet that he would be here once again so thanks again you guys for coming along